Hey everybody, the Reeswirl here, and welcome to a tutorial. Um, considering I've been getting a lot of questions on my PSP collection video about, like, my theme, how I've gotten my games ordered, like, in alphabetical categories, there's a way, and it involves plugins. So, hang on, if I just go down to, or well, up to settings, you can actually see that it says over here, Category mode, contextual, and then there's multi MS. And you can also have a cat prefix. That is all to do with a plugin called Game Categories Lite. And I will show you how to do that, but first, let us hop on over to the PC. Alright, so now we're on the PC, and this is the root of my PSP's memory stick. And for those of you that are interested, if I go to my theme, the one I'm using, I believe, is custom XMBWhite.ctf because the other one wouldn't make sense to be called that. So yeah, there's the theme. However, you can't just use it. Like, if you downloaded that and used it, I don't think it would work the same way mine does because the way mine works is, again, by using a plugin. If you look over here, there's a list of plugins. These are all the ones I'm going to install. I'll show you how to install. We have Categories Lite, which is the one that I had well, allowed me to have my games in a contextual alphabetical menu. We have CXMB, which allows you to use custom XMB themes, such as custom XMB white, whatever it was called. Macrofire, which allows you to um, assign macros in game and reconfigure controls completely. It's very useful. States menu, save states. If you've ever emulated anything, you know how useful save states are. They work essentially the same on PSP. The only difference is they take a little bit more time to actually save a state. And they have two modes, there's a local state and a global state. And then NP Loader, which is what you can use to allow you to use DLC. Again, these are all incredibly useful. But the first things first, like on the PSP, what you need to do, if you don't have this, which I doubt you would, is create a folder called SE Plugins. And then there we go, that's essentially our plugins folder. Everything over on the left is what will have a home here. So let's firstly install CXMB. So let's open that up. As you can see, it comes with two, or this one in particular, comes with two folders. You have the CXMB, which has got a configure text and a CXMB um, plugin file. So you wanna copy those over to your PSP. And if you look in VSH, it should say MS0 colon and then, you know, CXMB, CX, uh, XMB, PRX1. That essentially tells the PSP where to find this plugin. And um, if you have a PSP Go, I believe this is not MS0. It should be ES0. But I can't confirm that because I don't own a PSP Go. So sadly, I can't. Uh, tell you I realized something really stupid that I somehow missed and I don't know how it's because I copied it straight from the CXMB plugin If you look at this it says MS0 CXMB forward slash CXMB That doesn't tell the PSP where to find the CXMB plugin It does technically but we need to add in SE plugins forward slash CXMB CXMB that will allow us to um apply custom themes. So that, that's, that's, that's CXMB done. So that's already done. That's easy enough. And screw it, we'll do categories light next because that's quite a nice and it should be a nice and easy one. Right, we have two, two different ones here. We have the beta and we have R3. No idea what the difference is, so I'll just go with R3. Now let's open this up. And now it shows a lot of different things. It shows uh, the source, the translations, benchmark results, and then it's actually got these. You have categories light, that is the only one you need to care about. However, this one did not come with a text file. So what you need to do is manually go onto this. Would help if it actually showed me, here we go. Right there, and then copy this, only so you don't have to type it all out again. And then put it there, although this time we want to change it to MS0 and then do uh, se plugins forward slash what the plugin is called. So this one is category. Oh god, I can't even type. Category underscore light dot prx. And you have a one or a zero to signify whether you want that plugin to be active. We obviously want it to be active. And there we go. Now that can be closed. Although what I will say with 
category light, if you want it to be organized the way mine is, you need to go through your PSP game folder, game folder first off, and call every folder cat underscore a, because in the settings as I showed, it does have a cat prefix. So if you do a cat underscore, it will just list what's after the underscore. And so, as you can see, I have all the, like, um, I've just got the alphabet listed. Apart from, oh no, I even have Q. I don't know why I have Q. I shouldn't have Q because I don't have a game that begins with Q. And I, I think if there's nothing contained in the folder, like that's empty, it doesn't show up in the contextual menu. But the reason you have to have game set to cat, like cat underscore A, cat underscore B, is because if you did it with just an ISO folder, so if you just had an ISO folder called cat underscore A, it wouldn't be recognized. Because the PSP doesn't necessarily see the ISO folder, it only sees it if it's, I guess, combined with the PSP game folder. It, it's, it's weird how it works, but if you do it that way, then they'll both be organized into the same folder. And you can actually get a program, I can't remember what it's called, that allows you to sort your memory stick. And that's how I actually had them all sorted out, but now I'm not really that bothered about having the games alphabetically sorted within its designated letter. Anyway, back to the plugins. So now we have we have CXMB sorted and we have Category Light sorted. So we need not worry about those. But these next ones are probably a bit more confusing. A bit. Um, we have MP Loader, which in order to actually use this, you need to activate something within the recovery menu of the PSP. There's something called a it's like no D, no DRM engine or something like that, and that uh, that needs to be enabled for NP Loader to actually be usable. And then you have to you drag this in. Obviously, you don't need it in the VSH. You need it in your PSP games. So what we'll do is actually leave that for now, because I'm pretty sure one of the other uh, plugins here will have a a game text with it. So we may as well just use that. And here we have macro fire but we go into the here we go there we go perfect there we are we have all three of those drag those on it's given us the game file That's perfect they also some of them also come with the um like an any file or configuration file and that usually tells you what it is to bring that up that menu of the plugin so for macro fire it's volume up and down at the same time and that's quite useful to actually look up because if you didn't you won't know what it was to bring up the menu for it and then if we go into game it shows here we go ms0 se plugins macro fire and then we can also add a line to this which is ms0 go learn that i should have just copied it but never mind plugins forward slash np loader now i know i'm showing off np loader but when it comes to actually showing it off i won't be able to show it off it sounds stupid, but the reason is I don't really have that many games that have DLC. Aside from Ape Quest, but to, in order to show off the DLC for that, you have to play through most of the game. So, well not most, but you have to play through like an hour's worth of the game, so... <laughs> can't really show it off that easily, unfortunately. If I could, I would've. And here we have uh, PSP States. Oh, hang on. Right, that's got a game file itself, and if I copied that across, it would just... overwrite it. However... We should probably take a look at the game text, because with PSP States having two PRXs, you need to add both PRXs. So there we are, we have both. We save and we copy it across. Uh, boom, there you go. And that should be that. However, with PSP States, there's not really a problem, but within its configuration file, if we go on over and have a look, there we go, PSP, oh no, states menu picked, there it is. Yeah, if you look on the start with PSP states, that won't work, because we don't have PSP states, we have PSP states Kai. So what you need to do is just change start with from PSP states to, if my bloody mouse would comply, to PSP states Kai, save that, and that should work. Oh, key smokes. So now we have them all configured. Come on. Yeah, then we have them all configured. That's dandy. That's looking just fine. If we reload, there we go. Just want to double check. Everything here is in order. Macrofire, MP loader, PSP states, states. Yep, everything seems to be good. 
So that'll do it for the PC. Let us hop on back over to the PSP. I think I said PSP before. We're done on the PC, let's go to the PSP. Alright, so we're on the PSP. I've skipped ahead and reset the device, which is something you need to do if you want the custom themes to be available when you get back into the custom firmware PSP, because when you reset the PSP, it's back down to a stock PSP. So, um, if you didn't reset the device and tried to set it to a custom one, you would just be presented with these four options. Well, actually, no, probably only three options if you had, or two, probably two. I don't know why I have Tasty Treat, but whatever. I would only have three if I didn't have a custom theme already set. So there's that. Um, what we need to do now is go to a custom firmware PSP by running that, which is, I wouldn't say it's an annoyance because it's something you just get used to. It's something you have to run every time you load up the PSP from a shutdown. Or whenever you reboot the PSP, you have to run it. It just reinitializes the custom firmware, but I don't really see why people would have a problem with it when it takes literally five seconds to run and not, not much time to get back into a custom firmware PSP. But for some reason, it's taking a while. There we go. And there you go, because we have um, CXMB running. I couldn't remember what it was called. This is working perfectly. And let's go over to the themes. And you will notice that they are both listed. These are the two I have. That's what I'm currently using. And that is the other one I have available. But if I didn't have CXMB running, it would only show me these four options. It wouldn't show me these so that just goes to show that custom XMB is working. And I think if you change the color, it changes the color of the wave. Maybe not. I'm not entirely sure about that, but I haven't really fiddled with it either. Another thing is the uh, category, the game categories plugin. When you first get into this, it will be set to multi MS and category prefix will be set to no or none even. So if I set that to none, and then go over to the contextual menu, because I've still got it set to contextual menu when it loads. There we go. As you'll see, it li it lists everything with the cat underscore before it. And also lists a random MJP folder for some weird reason. So you want that enabled, and then it will just list it as whatever's after the underscore. And in my case, we'll also remove that random ass folder, which is great. So there you go, no folder. That's awesome. And another thing is this three menus. There's multi MS, which is where it just looks like you've got, if you had 26 letters or 26 folders, it would look like you had 26 separate um, memory sticks, which I don't, I personally don't like, but that's just because it's a lot of lists. It reminds me of the PS3 when you make albums. Like how my PS3 is set out, that's what multi MS looks like, I suppose. And you've got contextual menu, which is what I use, and folders, which I would highly advise against using. The reason being, I've used it once, like uh, 10 or so minutes ago, and what ended up happening was my computer locked up, computer, my PSP locked up, and then just shut down. It didn't know what to do, I suppose. Like with the folders, I just don't know how it works, honestly. So I would suggest not using it and just go with multi MS or contextual menu, to be honest. And now that's done, we need to have two more plugins to show off, which is Macrofire and PSP States. So I'll just go into Final Fantasy, because I know that's a game I've actually got a save in, so I can just load the save. Right, we're in, like, right at the end of Final Fantasy. Okay, so we have two plugins. We have Macrofire, which should be by doing volume down and volume up. There we go. We have the Macrofire um, plugin loaded. The Macrofire engine you can turn on, and you can go to Macro Settings. You can add a macro and record whatever you want. So if you wanted to just, for example, grind in this game, all you'd have to do is start recording, uh, move multiple times backwards and forwards, get into a fight, press X a bunch of times, or, you know, do whatever you want to do, and then set it to run. And you can do that to loop, as it says there, loop how many times, infinity, or you can, you know, suggest one or two times. It's quite useful for certain games if you need to do some grinding, because you're able to just, you know, set up a recording and then run it without having to touch the game. Definitely very, very useful. Anyway. That is Macrofire. I'll turn off the Macrofire engine. Don't know why I turned it on. But yeah, there's that. And then the other one we have is PSP States, which I believe the trigger for it is L and Home. Or is it Home and L? There we go. Oh, there we go. It popped up for a second. There you go. It's very weird, and I think that's why I changed it to L and R when you hit Home, because then you don't have to deal with you closing down the Home button and, you know, losing it. 
but you just have to press them at the same time very quickly and it will pop up. And then you can do a local save mode. Oh, hang on. I think the buttons might be messed up. It might be... Oh, there you go. Circle is select and X is back. That's set to like the Japanese configuration or controller configuration. So if I do circle, there you go. Now it'll say like slot not found and X is back. So if you're a UK or US user, or European user, I suppose, or not a Japanese user would be more appropriate, then I'd suggest in the configuration for PSP states, there's a, an option called swap buttons. Set that to true. Or set that to, yeah, so set that to true so it switches the circle and the X around so that circle is back and X is select. But there we go. We have local save and global save and also just with PSP states, if you try doing a global save in one game and a global save in another game and you're in another game and you try and do a global load to one of the other games, the game, uh, not the game, the system will crash and probably switch itself off. I've tried doing that on multiple occasions, it doesn't work. So I'd recommend just using local saving and local loading. You get 10 slots, which is more than enough. Oh, you get nine. Still, more than enough slots. But that's going to be the end of this tutorial. So I hope you found it educational. Uh, I do actually enjoy doing these, so I think I might do more in the future. I won't be doing RPG Maker tutorials, so don't even ask. But I might, I might be, I might do more tutorials to do with I don't know custom firmware stuff or hacked consoles, modded consoles, whatever. I don't really know because it's already really saturated with people doing stuff like that. So I think I might just leave it at doing the odd ones every now and again. But that is going to be the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed. And until next time, take care.